It's lunchtime, and this is Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. Here in Redmond, we're visited by some of the smartest people on the planet, pretty much every day. Every chance I get, I meet up with them for lunch. Today, I finished talking with the CTO of Estee Lauder, the very smart and always fabulous Rhonda Vettieri. So now as you take a look at your team itself, you know, the IT department, mm -hmm. how is the morale um, gone now that you've moved so much to the cloud? Has that morale gone up? Do people see that their jobs are more impactful or have they, you know, this fear that they had, well, maybe my job gets eliminated? Mm -hmm. What's been that impact? That's been an interesting transition and really worked with a team on the mental model shift. Their mental model on growing and springboarding into what we call the new technology world. The morale is up. At first you have what I call going the valley of despair yeah. and then it goes back up <laughs> yeah. just like things in life. But as you lead and show them how things come product, you know, more productive, how they're giving back, how they can free up their time quite frankly and work on more fun things and not so fingers on the keyboard on operational issues, mm -hmm. their morale goes up. And we're proud of that. And there's a lot of rock stars that have developed out of that. So that topic of staying relevant is really important. You know, early in your career, you, you spent time at CompuServe and at WorldCom and MCI. I mean, you've had a front row seat at companies who were you know, at the pinnacle of driving different portions of the mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. and then kind of fell away, mm -hmm. right? What can technology leaders learn from that? What did you take away from that, those experiences? Um, being relevant and that you could become obsolete overnight and not realize that no matter what field that you were in, being in technology, you can be merged, acquisitions, everything happens and things are coming at you from all angles and you need to be able to manage that change. So I took that as a learning experience yeah. and stayed through all the different um, mergers and acquisitions to be that constant denominator to drive that change and making the companies more relevant as the world changed. I read an article where you listed your top 10 list of business standards mm -hmm. and there were there were three of them that's like really hit home with me because I, I, I value these three as, as much as you do. One of them is uh, what you call managerial courage. Mm -hmm. Very good. Recognize your team. Mm -hmm and then know your metrics. Yes, recognize your team. So I'm always about, it's the team and recognizing them. It's celebrating successes. Most people need to forget to celebrate. It can be little successes that you celebrate yes. that have a tremendous impact on the culture. Absolutely. Give me an example. You talk about leadership courage. Mm. Leadership courage is the ability to step up and say the power of no in a nice way. I don't agree with this. This is what it means. We're doing the wrong thing and even on the team and partners, I look for that. Someone who has a challenging spirit that can tell you you're going down a wrong way. All too often, people are afraid to say no. Mm -hmm. And most times, you know, who you're talking to, they just want to know what the answer is. Yes. And no is okay, but it takes courage. And, that, and for many people, that's a courage that has to be developed. Mm -hmm. That actually is one of the interview questions that I ask when I'm interviewing senior leaders. Mm. Tell me about a time when you had to say no and were convicted uh, that, that the right answer was no and it was and you knew it was going to be a challenge to get the rest of the organization mm -hmm. aligned and i'll tell you if people cannot come back and give me an example of exactly when they've mm -hmm. done that they haven't had enough leadership time they haven't had enough leadership experience great point that's great it has been a pleasure it's been a pleasure yeah. thank you okay. all right all right thank you thank Brad. you so much all right bye-bye bye. Next time on Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. The Duckworth Lewis. The Duckworth Lewis, yeah, this one I can give a, it's, it's one of the most illogical things to happen in cricket. <laughs> <laughs> the erstwhile uh, deployment architectures, you know, are a thing of the past. You can't manage such explosion with that kind of a thing.